Hi there everyone. As you can see, I'm in the middle of doing some RF power testing on different digital FPV systems. And I found something so bizarre and so interesting that I had to share it with you right away. Let's head over to the bench and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so let me take you through the test setup on the bench really quickly. I have the video transmitter over here. This is the Walksnow Avatar V1 and the antenna outputs of the VTX are connected into these two RMS power meters for RF. And these work using square law detectors. So they're independent of uh, bandwidth, frequency, and modulation. They give an output that's proportional only to the RF power that's being input into them. The output of these RMS detectors is sent to this Arduino, which converts it to counts on the ADC, and then does some maths to convert it into an approximate milliwatt value. Now, I haven't calibrated this system yet, so um, the milliwatt value isn't perfectly accurate, but it's gonna be plenty good enough for what I'm gonna show you right now. You can see that before I power anything up, we're getting basically zero on the gauge, almost no counts and zero milliwatts. Okay, so now I have the system powered up at 25 milliwatts, and you can see we're getting about 271 counts on one of the antennas and 265 counts on the other. And if I turn the power level up, you can see that the counts has also jumped up. Now we're at 346 on both antennas, pretty much. This is at 200 milliwatts. If I then go to 500 milliwatts, counts jump up again. We're now at 382, 383, something like that. If we then go to 700 milliwatts, again, counts are going up. 392, 390. At 1000 milliwatts, we're up over 400 counts now, so 403 and 405. And at 1200 milliwatts, we're up at 410 counts on both antennas. And what we can see is that every time I step up the power, the counts on the gauge increases, right? Exactly as we would expect. Now we're going to do exactly the same test with the Walksnow Avatar V2. So I have the V2 transmitter connected here. It's only got one antenna output, so it's going to be going into uh, module one of this RF power meter. And you can see here we're at 25 milliwatts and we have 312 counts on the power meter reading there. And now I'm going to turn up the power. So now we've gone to 200 milliwatts and you can see exactly as we would expect, the counts has gone up. We're now up at 392 counts, so a nice increase. Now let's go to 500 milliwatts. And again, we've got an increase. The counts have gone up to 420, so the RF power is increasing. Now let's go to 700 milliwatts. Notice how the counts don't increase. Still 420. Now let's go to 1000 milliwatts. No change, still 420 counts. And 1200 milliwatts, exactly the same, 420 counts. So what we can see is all the power levels above 500 milliwatts, 700, 1000 and 1200 milliwatts, don't actually increase the RF power being delivered by the VTX. Let's take a look at a chart of these results now so we can see more clearly what's going on. I've converted the counts from the RF power meter into milliwatts, and I've done this using an ostensibly calibrated analog RF power meter and the output from this Rush Tank Solo. So, you know, this isn't reference grade equipment by any means, but it should be plenty good enough to see the differences that we're looking for here. For the Walksnow Avatar V1 system, we can see that the two antennas always transmit equivalent amounts of RF power, and I think that's as we would expect. And as we step up through the power modes from 25 all the way up to 1200 milliwatts, every time we step up in the power mode, we see a commensurate increase in the RF output power from both of the antennas. We can see that the power setting doesn't directly correspond to the amount of RF power being output. So at the 1000 milliwatt setting, we're not transmitting 1000 milliwatts of RF. It's more like 300 milliwatts um, through each antenna. And I think that's as we would expect. I mean, these power setting modes, I think, are more equivalent to analog power settings rather than being an absolute measure of the RF power output of the VTX. So rather than the 25 milliwatt power setting being 25 milliwatts of output power, it's a power setting that is equivalent to an analog VTX set at 25 milliwatts in terms of range and penetration. And I think that's my understanding anyway. For the Avatar V2 system, we see something totally different and quite bizarre, actually. Firstly, the power settings are not equivalent 
not even close to equivalent to the power settings on the V1 system. The 25 milliwatt setting you can see is much, much more. The 200 milliwatt setting is like three times as much as on V1. And the 500 milliwatt setting is more than twice as much as what we got on V1. And above 500 milliwatts, you can see that the output power doesn't increase at all. They are maxed out at 500 milliwatts with V2. There's no more power to be gotten out of that amplifier. And so they just stay at the maximum output power for all of the higher power modes. We can also see that on the V2 system, the amount of RF output power is actually much better matched to what the mode setting says. So the 25 milliwatt setting actually has pretty much 25 milliwatts of output power. The 200 milliwatt setting has pretty much 200 milliwatts of output power. And the 500 milliwatt setting has 450 milliwatts of output power. And that's as much as they can get out of that amplifier. And then at the higher settings, 700, 1000 and 1200 milliwatts, um, it's still just 450 milliwatts of output power. So let me know down in the comments what you think. Do you think this is a bug that somehow the V2 VTX has these power output settings mismapped in some way? Or do you think it's a feature and Walksnail are wanting to move to the power output setting that you see in the goggles being equivalent to the RF output power from the VTX itself? In either case, the V2 VTX does seem to output more power on its one antenna than the V1 VTX outputs on one of its antennas at the 1200 milliwatt setting. It's just bizarre to me that it does it at 500 milliwatts, 700, 1000 and 1200, and that there's no difference between any of those modes on the V2 VTX. This is just the start of the RF power output testing I've got planned, and I cannot wait to see what I'm gonna find out when I finish up all this test work. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that video as soon as it becomes available. Before I let you go, I wanna to talk to you about battery testing. I'm fundraising right now to buy some battery test equipment so that I can scientifically analyze all the different batteries that we use in FPV and get you the information to know which batteries are great value and which packs are overpriced and ones to avoid. This battery test equipment isn't cheap, it's over $2,000, but we're already more than 10% of the way there. Thank you so much to everyone who's already donated. If you can head on over to my Patreon, there's a link down in the video description, and give less than $5 a month or more if you feel that I've earned it, your contributions will help us get this battery testing up and running. And I promise you, it's gonna save you and everyone in FPV a heap of money not buying poor quality batteries in the future. Thank you so much for all your help. Head on over to that Patreon link, and I'll see you in the next one. Happy flying.